Welcome to our video. Under the sea and ready for war? U.S. wants to spend billions on spy submarine to fend off ocean deep China, Russia advances. I would like to focus on the USA Today report, May 23, 2023. Forget space warfare. The newest frontier for potential combat is the ocean floor, and the U.S. and its adversaries, especially Russia and China, are scrambling for dominance. It's called seabed warfare. For the U.S. Navy, that means building its most expensive spy submarine ever. A $5.1 billion high-tech vessel that would patrol the deepest reaches of the ocean and deploy mini-subs and drones that can battle hostile forces. While withstanding the crushing pressure of the ocean depths, this proposed successor to the USS Jimmy Carter, a nuclear-powered spy submarine filled with robots and specialized ships and divers, is just one of Washington's secret initiatives aimed at protecting America's commercial and security interests deep under the sea. It has become an especially urgent priority after last year's suspected attacks on the Nord Stream gas pipelines, which carry gas from Russia to Germany. The ramping up of preparations for global seabed war comes at a time when oil and gas pipelines crisscross the ocean floor. And telecommunications cables that connect one continent to another are even more ubiquitous. They are all extremely vulnerable to tampering or attack by hostile nations or terrorists. According to U.S. and allied government reports and officials, in fact, an attack on just one cable or pipeline, or even a temporary disruption, could knock out critically needed internet access, energy supplies and other necessities for tens of millions of people. It is not satellites in the sky, according to retired Navy Admiral James Stavridis, but pipes on the ocean floor that form the backbone of the world's economy. Currently, more than 95% of the traffic coursing through the global internet is carried by just 200 undersea fiber optic cables. Some as far below the surface as Everest is above it, Stavridis wrote in the foreword to a 2017 report, undersea cables, indispensable. Insecure, which raised alarms about the extreme vulnerabilities of the seabed commercial networks. Stavridis who led the NATO alliance in global operations from 2009 to 2013 as Supreme Allied Commander, warned that an all-out attack on undersea cable infrastructure would cause potentially catastrophic damage to the U.S. and its allies, and their ability to transmit confidential information, conduct financial transactions and communicate internationally. Whether from terrorist activity or an increasingly bellicose Russian naval presence, the threat of these vulnerabilities being exploited is growing. The threat is nothing short of existential, according to the report itself, which was written by then British parliamentarian Rishi Sunak, who is now the country's prime minister. The U.S. minus and its allies and adversaries minus are focusing on this potential threat from an offensive as well as a defensive standpoint, according to Stavridis and other experts, including a U.S. naval analyst. They are also tapping into the telecommunications cables as valuable sources of intelligence. Six years after that report was published, Stavridis told USA Today, I am more concerned now than I was in 2017 about the dangers of an attack on undersea cables. One reason for that, Stavridis said, is heightened political tension between Russia and the West. Also, undersea technology has improved in terms of how these cables could be attacked, he said, citing the twin Nord Stream blasts, which in my view was probably done by the Russians. And global dependence on the internet is growing exponentially year after year, Stavridis said. With well over 50 billion devices on the Internet of Things driving the global economy. Only a few hundred cables carry all of that traffic, he said in an interview. It is a dangerous and unsustainable system. China versus Taiwan, Russia's suspected role in pipeline attack, the early stages of seabed warfare. 
Last month, two major submarine internet cables were cut to at least one of Taiwan's outlying islands, raising U.S. concerns about possible sabotage by China, the archenemy of the key U.S. ally, said the Washington-based U.S. naval analyst, who agreed to be interviewed on the condition of anonymity to discuss ongoing military issues. Taiwan's National Communications Commission has blamed China but stopped short of saying it was intentional. Even so, the U.S. analyst said, the incidents heightened U.S. concerns that China is testing its seabed warfare capabilities, perhaps in advance of a military invasion of Taiwan. Seabed warfare also has gained significance because of Russia's efforts in mapping undersea infrastructure and its suspected role in the Nord Stream pipeline attacks. Russia has built its own deep sea spy sub, the Belgorod, which can fire two megaton nuclear warhead torpedoes at depths no existing weapon system could intercept, and could take out an entire U.S. port or aircraft carrier strike group and it quietly has been building other specialized deep seabed war vessels, including intelligence ships and submarines that disrupt undersea cable infrastructure. Last month, Ireland's military released surveillance footage of at least two Russian ships off the Galway coast near a newly opened seabed communications cable. Irish senator and security expert Tom Clonan told local media the ships were well known to the Irish defence community, including one that has a diving platform and carries deep-sea submersibles. These are the fibre-optic transatlantic cables that come from Ireland, and, basically connect the European Union to the United States, said Clonan. Something like one-third of all of the data online goes through these cables, so there are really really critical piece of infrastructure. From Soviet communication networks to deepwater oil drilling, seabed warfare dates back to at least World War I, when Britain secretly cut German cables laid deep in the English Channel, forcing Germany to use long-distance radio transmissions that were intercepted. The U.S. Navy also has a rich history of deep-sea military activity. It tapped Soviet communications networks in the 1970s, according to experts interviewed by USA Today, including the U.S. naval analyst in Washington. And the past few decades have seen a dramatic increase in commercializing the ocean floor, including deepwater oil drilling and, more recently, mining for precious metals and other resources. War is a human endeavor. And if humans are moving activities onto the seabed, war will follow, said Peter Singer, an advisor to the U.S. military and future of warfare, strategist at the New America think tank in Washington, D.C. Now that there's infrastructure, seabed warfare is following where the business is, Singer said. They're going down there because of all this civilian economic activity. And as it becomes more and more of a battle space, then you see more and more investment and spending on it in defense budgets. One reason everyone is worried about seabed conflict is that despite the potentially trillions of dollars of resources at or under the ocean floor, there aren't clear international laws to govern it. Maritime areas are governed largely by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea which says the rights of states diminish as one moves away from their coastlines. Some countries, including Russia, have interpreted the convention to suit their interests in aggressively commercializing the deep sea to appropriate resources. Given these aggressive moves, various nations, including the U.S. and allies France and Britain, have made seabed warfare an urgent priority in order to protect their interests. A $5.1 billion offensive and defensive seabed weapon. And the U.S. isn't just preparing to defend its interests. Its research and development shows that Washington is quietly, but aggressively, ramping up its offensive seabed warfare capabilities too. The U.S. naval analyst said, with an eye toward protecting sensitive assets that lie on the ocean floor, 
The U.S. Navy has commissioned a next-generation attack submarine that can sneak along the ocean floor and perform covert operations. They include deploying Navy SEALs, retrieving parts from rockets and missiles used in testing, protecting, and tapping, deep-sea communications cables, locating and protecting rare earth mineral deposits and other secret missions. Preliminary work on the submarine is already underway at the General Dynamics Electric Boat Shipyard in Groton, Connecticut, according to the U.S. Naval Analyst. The Congressional Research Service and trade publications like NavalNews.com it likely will be a modified submarine capable of acting as a mothership for underwater vehicles. Remotely operated ships, known as ROVs, and other things that can easily maneuver around the seafloor. According to Pentagon budget documents and a congressional report on this sub, it will cost roughly $5.1 billion. A standard submarine in the same category cost $3.45 billion in 2021. Little opposition expected from Congress. The new sub is included in the Navy's fiscal 2024 budget request and has yet to be funded by Congress, but little to no opposition is expected. Then it won't be ready for an estimated 13 years. The naval analyst told USA Today. Last September, several top electric boat officials said the project is an urgent priority for the Navy, and hinted at the sub's new seabed warfare capabilities. While we can't get into the details, we can say it is a complex, fast-moving program with strong Navy and congressional support, Kevin Graney, president of General Dynamics Electric Boat, said in an in-house podcast. Later, he added, the work we're doing here on a very tight timeline on something that is desperately needed by our Navy is really inspiring. That's all. This is part one. To be continued to part two.